Hey, I'm Matt. Today I'm going to try to make charcuterie boards with epoxy and walnut. I'm going to tell you what I learned along the way. And I'm going to show you the finished products. I'm going to tell you all the tips and tricks I've learned as well as how much you can sell these for. Let's go. So I'm using charcuterie kits from Old Log and Sawmill. He sells these charcuterie kits by the eight pack where you can get eight of these boards and then you can cut them in half and use half or you make up to 16 charcuterie kits mixed with epoxy or more likely use them as river table or river charcuterie boards so that you get this nice river effect. For this project, you will need a few things to get started, but once you get them, you should be able to reuse them multiple times and to be able to make your money back pretty quick. I purchased this mold from Ohani Artesians. It's a plastic mold, it's reusable. Uh, what's great about this mold specifically is it has clamps to hold the boards down, which if you don't know, epoxy is basically a water consistency. So wood will actually float up if you don't hold it down some way. This one is from Crafted Elements. And what's great about this one, it's silicone. You put some type of weight on top of it to hold your boards down. If you go to craftedelements.com, you'll see all their different various shapes. You get them charcuterie shapes. You can get them in a rectangle shape like this. It's just super easy to do. So let's go through this. Let me show you how to do this, what I learned along the way. If you stick around to the end, I'll give you a power tip. I picked this piece because it has this nice knot in there, a couple of holes. We can fill that with epoxy too, and I think it'll kind of give it a cool look. We're gonna cut it about 20 and a half inches long, and then we'll clean up these edges. Before you put any wood into the mold, you need to make sure you're using some type of mold release agent. For the plastic mold, the Ahani mold, I'm gonna be using this honey wax mold release agent. It's more like a paste wax type thing. Wipe it in there, wipe it on all the parts and pieces that go with that mold. For the silicone mold, I'm actually using a spray mold that was recommended by Crafted Elements. And both of these mold releases are available on Amazon. If you're interested in any of the supplies that you see used today to build these epoxy boards, including the wood, I'll put links in the description below so you can check them out for yourself. One thing that I like about this Ohoni, I don't know how to say that, Ohoni Artesians, is it has these little levels right there. And you know, if you're working with epoxy, it's basically in a water consistency. It creates a lot less work on you if the pour is level when you go to finishing your board later. But these feet on the bottom are adjustable, so you can actually unscrew those a little bit and level that up. There's one on the side, and there's also one on the end. What's great about epoxy is you can mix and match all kinds of colors. I like the fact that Old Logan has these kits available that has samples of all of his colors. They call them samples, but I've made five so far and I still have probably a hundred boards left. I mean, there's so many colors in here, uh, different blues and black, silver, white. There's just a lot of combinations you can play with with your kit. So according to a calculator I found online, I'm gonna need 74 ounces of epoxy to go in that pour. So we're gonna use these measuring cups. They have two to one ratio, which we have to put two parts of A, one part of B. We'll mix it up, put this color in there and make the pour and see what happens. So I used about half of this jar for that. It's gonna be a really big charcuterie board though. So that's a, a positive, I guess. Walnut stir stick, just because. I'm gonna stir these more. I'm gonna go ahead and stop the camera so you don't have to sit there and watch me. I mixed each one for two minutes, over two minutes each. And it's that way I get them good and mixed up, make sure to scrape the sides, the bottom, uh, the whole nine and get them all stirred up. As you can see here, they're really clear and they have a few bubbles, but I think that's gonna be okay. This should be, it should go away. I'm gonna be using this deep blue color. How much do you put in each one? There's no science to this as far as I can tell. You just put in enough color to, to get the desired effect. So the more you put in, the darker it'll be, less clear. The less you put in, the more clear it'll be. Now you don't want this clumped up, so we're gonna start this a while too. It's 
check that out. So I've let this dry. I poured this on a Friday and today's Monday. So Saturday, Sunday, and then Monday. It, I'm pretty sure it's set. So the look is absolutely beautiful. I love this blue mixed with this walnut. Of course, when we plane this down, we're gonna see more of the walnut. So it's gonna contrast a lot more. Now, kind of give you my thoughts of what I'm feeling right now. I'm worried these blocks are gonna be stuck in there because it's, the epoxy's pretty deep on them. And I don't know how to get those out of there at all. <clears throat> Did I mess up? No, check that. Whoa, it just come right out. That's golly, it's an eighth inch thick. and just popped right out of there. Putting this on there really made a big difference, I think. Now I'm supposed to be able to just take this end off, then take this out of the form. Time to unmold the one in the silicone mold. These are just 10 pound weights. I put that Tyvek tape on there to keep them from sticking. Now to unmold it, all you do for the silicone mold is just pull it away from the sides a little bit. And if you sprayed it correctly, it should come right out. Super easy. Now we can run that through the planer and uh, see the final result. Out of the two uh, molds, this one is by far, the Crafted Elements is by far the easiest to remove. What's great about these specifically is now all I have to do is wash this with a little mild soap and water and it's ready to reuse again. All you do is use this mold release spray and then you're ready to put your new pieces of wood in there and pour some more epoxy. It's that easy. When these come out of the mold, what's awesome about this is the bottom is already flat because the bottom of that mold is flat. So you put this side down whenever you send it through the planer, it's gonna flatten the top. Once you see that it's all consistent on the top as far as being flattened or the planer marks are all the way across there, then you flip it over and run this side through a couple of times till all of this is even all the way across. Both sides will be perfectly flat every time. Unmolding on this one's quite a bit different and it's a little more difficult as far as getting it out of the mold. You saw earlier where I hit the blocks and knocked these off, they come out pretty easy. One thing to note, when you unmold this, it does take a little finagling to get something in there to break that seal and then to pop it out. Once you break the seal, it comes right out. When you put this back on, all you need to do is screw that back on and check that gasket on the end. If it's still intact, you're good to go. You don't have to put any silicone or anything like that on there. It's totally reusable. One thing to note on the Ohani mold is if you take all of the screws loose, in other words, take one end all the way off and then just unloosen the rest of those screws and kind of break it free, then all of that wood comes out of there much, much easier than the way you saw me do it previously. Couple of compare and contrast on the two different types of molds I'm using. I really do love the fact that these are so easy to unmold and the fact that you can get them in different shapes. What I like about this Ohani one is that you have all of these options to hold your work down. So you don't have to worry about putting weights or anything like that on there. And this self levels uh, with those feet. So you don't have to worry about that. So on the top edge of the boards, I'm using an eighth inch roundover bit and that just softens the top of that board so that it's not, doesn't have that sharp edge. And I also use that eighth inch roundover on the corners. On the bottom of the boards, I'm using a chamfer bit just to give it a little definition so that when it's sitting on the table or on the counter, then you'll be able to kind of see it has a little definition to it. Polishing pad and polishing compound. I want to put these handles on each end to make this like a serving tray. Yeah, I'm nervous, man, because if I mess this up right now, oh my goodness. So what I've done was I marked an inch in from the ends and then into the center where this would be, you know, centered perfectly such as that. So you saw me put mineral oil on there first. Now I'm just gonna go back and wipe some Odie's on there. I'll probably put some Outlaws board butter on the on the final coat just to seal it up. The reason you want to put some type of uh, finish on top like board butter 
Uh, this one, you can always go back and recondition this with board butter, but two, it has that wax in there. It's made with yellow beeswax and mineral oil. The oil is gonna help condition the wood. And then the beeswax basically gives it like a, almost like a hard chill, kind of like, think about it like waxing your car. It just lengthens the life of your boards and uh, just gives it more protection. I'm gonna go ahead and put these handles on. It's best to use stainless steel screws for this application. So I'm just snugging it up with this and then I'll tighten it, uh, barely tighten it with a screwdriver. I don't wanna over tighten those. So what did I learn when making these and what can you sell these for to make up for the cost of all this stuff? What I learned was it's not that hard. It just takes a little bit of time and a little patience on your part. If you have patience and a place to put these out of the way for a few days, then you'll be golden. You can just keep batching these out because they're doesn't take long to finish them once they come out of the mold. What I did learn on the blue or the black or the darker colors is you don't need to step through all those grits all the way up to 2000 grit or whatever I was doing on the first one. All you have to do is go up to about 300 grit, even 220. I believe this one was just 320. And then I used the polishing compound just to kind of smooth out the any roughness on the epoxy that was left, which was very little. So how much do these sell for? Well, it depends on the size, the type of wood you're using, and the more exotic woods, obviously you can charge a little more because those woods cost more. This is walnut, and what I charge for these is, we're gonna start these at $185 shipped, I believe is what Miss 731 put them on the website for. Now, if you look on Etsy, they're similarly priced. I believe Old Login sells his for a similar price. And so this is about what you're gonna be able to sell these for. And they are just beautiful, beautiful pieces that people can uh, use on the counter or use as serving trays, decorations, things like that. Now, I have a lot of questions on, can you cut on these? I personally wouldn't cut on these because of the epoxy. It's just not really what it's meant for. For one, it's gonna get all scarred up and there's really no way to fix it once you cut into it. These are serving trays slash charcuterie boards. They're not cutting boards. If you wanna make a cutting board, then I would suggest not using epoxy. You know what time it is. Power tip time. So the power tip today is don't be afraid to try new things. I'm having tons of fun with these things. And yeah, they cost a lot. The, the epoxy costs, the molds cost. I understand that, but you can make that cost back up by selling these at a premium price over what you can sell regular cutting boards or charcuterie boards for because it costs you more, but also because they're so beautiful and unique looking. So don't be afraid to put yourself out there, invest in your business. If that's something you wanna do and can do, just give it a try. Also, these make amazing gifts. If you like this video, you should check out my other charcuterie board video that only uses wood. Very simple, easy project. Click that box right there to go watch that. Click in the box, gets you the big old virtual fist bump. Also an easy cutting board video right there.